Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. It's Tolisile Retail Investor speaking here. And in today's video, guys, I have a quality information which is whereby like I'm sharing why I am adding this ETF in my portfolio called Satrix MSCI China, which is just an ETF that tracks the Chinese uh, index. Well, before I even begin, guys, first I would like to make this disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor. These videos are not made for providing uh, advice in terms of investing. If you want a financial advisor, please do get yourself a profession who specializes in that field. All right. Without wasting any time, guys, in this video, you will gain a lot. I will advise you to stay tuned up until to the end of the video because here you will see my thinking, my idea generation, my research process. All right. Now, in today's video, guys, I will cover the following. I will explain what is this ETF, actually, uh, which is the Satrix MSCI China, which is actually an ETF that tracks the Chinese index. And then I will also cover the historical performance in terms of the compound annual uh, growth rate. And then I will also cover the long-term driving catalyst. What are the catalysts that actually will drive this ETF to go up? And then so that you can, can make profit in terms of... Um, capital appreciation and then i will also touch on the technical analysis or uh, whereby i will be showing you uh, how to read the price chart actually by doing analyzing this uh, etf whereby i will be just reading that graph and explaining it to you why is like that and then where i am actually aiming at uh, adding shares as it goes down and then i will also cover the risk that are associated with this ETF. Uh, no, any, any all the investments actually they have uh, inherent risk. You know, there is no investment that is risk free. So it's for quite important to also highlight the risk that are associated with this uh, ETF. All right, guys. Without wasting any time, let's just get into it. All right, here I am on Easy Equity here, whereby I will be actually explaining this ETF. I will also be using this Easy Equity. Uh, part environment here so this is the satrix x msci china etf so an etf if you are not uh, familiar with this um, kind of investment vehicle uh, etf is an investment vehicle that actually tracks the underlying asset you know it tracks another assets so uh, they are also uh, uh, traded uh, on the joint spec stock exchange and also to other exchanges it trades like a company like shares so they track a particular actually assets for example you know we have gold which is a commodity so if you don't want to buy gold itself the gold the physical metal there is an etf uh, which trade on a, on an exchange that etf actually it tracks the price of the gold so if you don't want to buy the gold you can just buy the etf and then you won't be owning the physical gold you'll be just owning shares on that etf which tracks the price of gold when the price of gold goes up for example the etf will goes up again also, this ETF here now, which is uh, the Chinese ETF, the MSCI, it tracks what we call uh, the Chinese index. You know, the Chinese index uh, actually is an index that actually represent the total stock market for China. For example, here in South Africa, we have Satrix Food. Satrix Food, it's the index which is um, which is an ETF actually which tracks our index, which is the FTC. Uh, FTSE, FTSE 40 for South Africa. So now they take 40 companies and then they take the average in terms of uh, uh, market cap. They rank them in terms of the market cap, in terms of how they contribute to that actually index. And then now this index, these top 40 companies, they represent the South African stock market. When you hear that the South African stock market is down today, it's going to be based on the index. When the index goes down, a lot of companies will follow too, even the smaller ones. Then they will follow through, they will go down most of them. So now, MCSI China ETF, you can take it as like uh, the Satrix 40 of China. But this one is for China because it tracks the index that actually represent the Chinese stock market. So I hope you guys, you understand this uh, asset. It's just an investment vehicle that tracks the uh, Chinese stock market. So it's called what? Uh, Satrix MCSI China ETF. There is a lot of these ETF actually which tracks the Chinese index. Some of them that uh, traded into like uh, New York Stock Exchange and the Nasdaq Stock Exchange. Uh, they, they, have, they have different tickers, you no know, different names such as this one, the MSCI. Some they have different tickers like uh, MCHI, which is also traded on New York Stock Exchange. So I will be also 
uh, going through those ones with different index uh, tickers just to show you their performance because this one here on easy equity uh, it was only actually started in 2020 i will show you that uh, if you check this uh, the inception date uh, this fun type it's a fun type uh, it was only uh, it only started in 2020 uh, on the 22 of uh, july that was 07 july so it's still new it, uh, i don't think it doesn't even have a year so far it's still new it does not even have a year in existence it's a new etf uh, which is here but provided on this platform with easy equity for uh, which provides opportunity for investors for a year in south africa if you want to invest into the chinese market uh, of course you can just buy that basket that collective uh, companies of China which actually group together into this ETF so it will give you exposure to different companies in China all right now uh, the geographic location of this ETF of course it tracks companies from China you can see uh, the geo focus it focuses on China uh, actually uh, this uh, ETF actually those companies actually they are being actually ranked in terms of how much they could they contribute to this ETF in terms of the market cap all right so the expense ratio it's none not applicable a normal expense ratio it's the amount the fee that you pay when you buy an etf per annum some of the fee they are like 0 0.4 uh, 0 0.38 if you go to uh, satrix Fort, you can check there there is a fee there which is under a, a expense ratio it's a percentage that you pay per annum which is deducted from your actually your, your your account all right and then now let's further go down here and check the, this mini performance for this guy now this performance it's only for this etf because it was only started since from like uh, 2020 but then when i when i when i go to the next point here explaining the historical performance of this uh, chinese market in terms of the compound annual growth rate i won't be talking about this one here i won't be talking about this one here uh, i will be talking about the other ones that have been in existence for more than 10 years 30 years back in the days so i will be using the other ones which are listed on the johannes back stock on a, i mean sorry on the new york stock exchange so those ones they will give you uh, more data uh, in terms of like uh, trying to get that historical performance of the ctf this one this performance here is only for this one which is listed here on johannes back stock exchange you can see in the last week this was uh, uh down by seven percent point seven point six four percent in the last month it was down about four percent then in the last three months it was up by four percent. Then in the last six months it was up by one nine six one point nine two percent. And then on year to date, currently it is up by nine point two three percent. That's on year to date. Currently now it's up by nine point two three percent. So which is quite uh, a better return because it's not yet over. We're still moving forward toward uh, the end of the year in December. Probably around December, this ETF would be up by more than double digits, fifteen percent, twelve percent, which is quite a better return than the ones that you actually get from the bank when you actually put your money there into a saving account all right so this is not the full historical performance that i promise that i will be taking you through that guys so this is just the mini performance now it which is which falls under the explanation of this etf so so far this is how it has performed uh on jse which is not quite bad you know all right and another thing that i would uh, like to emphasize here on this etf is the fund size the fund size the amount of cash that has been invested into the ctf and there are ones that has not yet been invested as you if you move your case here they will explain what is the fund size you know a fund size refers to the value of the assets in the fund plus the amount of uninvested capital all right so you can see that the fund size is around 1.3 billion so it's quite a, a huge size then the fees here which is your expense ratio it's uh it's not applicable so far so far you you're not paying uh, any fees per month i mean per annum uh, in terms of this etf uh, with the information which is provided here on easy equity this is the graph but we'll go to a more detailed graph not this one this is a very bad one uh, to read it does not have a lot of information all right so this is an etf guys that i'm talking about and then now the second thing that i would like to do is to go through the historical performance in terms of the compound annual crude rate now we'll use the cousin of this one which has been in existence for more than 10 years whereby now we have a lot of data now we'll be using the one which is listed on uh, the new york stock exchange because those ones are actually easy to to find to track the data uh, like backward back testing them all right let's do that without wasting any time now we are checking the historical performance in terms of the combined annual growth rate all right 
Now, if you check here, if we start here from, let's start from 2010, rather than going back to 100 years, let's just take a period of like 10 years from now, uh, 2010. If you go to 10 years from starting from 2010, ending to 2021, and then now let's assume that we're starting with uh, 10,000. Even though it says US dollar, they just assume it's friends. We're starting with 10,000, and then now uh, we're going to be investing into this ETF, which is the Chinese index, is a, which tracks the Chinese uh, index, actually. So now I'm going to be using a different one. Uh, if you see here, it's MSCI, because this is a symbol which is represented on the JSE stock, uh, Joint Spec Stock Exchange. But then on the other exchanges, it's been given a different name, a different ticker. So now I'll be using MCHI, which is actually uh, listed on other exchanges, such as New York Stock Exchange. You can see here, I share MSCI China ETF. The symbol is MCHI. It is still the same one. Even here, you can see that MSCI, it also appears. Then we'll be clicking that one. And then how much are we going to be investing? We'll be investing 100%. I 100%, so about that. And then now we will analyze the portfolio. Let's analyze the portfolio and see the compound annual crude rate. Now, here are the results of our ETF when we back tested, like historically, 10 years back. You can see that our 10,000 US dollar or rand, it will now, it's worth. 25,810.77 so we have doubled our account if you had invested from 2010 up to now so now the compound annual growth rate which is quite amazing it's 11.03 percent so it's growing at 11.03 percent per annum compoundly not with a simple interest because remember if you put your money into a savings account into the bank normally they will give you a single digit of five uh, to actually 7% per annum. And then this is simple interest, not even compound interest in most cases. But if you put your money into this ETF, doing nothing without any intensive research, and then you just forget about it to go and work to your 9 to 5, you know that your money is growing at 11.03% compoundly per annum. Your money is working for you without doing any hard work. All right, that is a quite good returns there. And then if you check other parameters again uh, under this performance, which is quite good, uh, you can see that at the best year, this um, ETF went up by 54%, 68%. So there was a year where by now you see your account growing by 54,68%. And then now the volatility, which is uh, the risk, the standard deviation, it's 19.52%. But that is uh, not quite important for now if you don't understand that concept, but you can just research more on that concept. So your worst year, it shows that your worst year, it will have been this uh, investment will have been down by 19.77% when the market crashes actually. So this is your worst year. And then now your maximum drawdown, the maximum drawdown now per annum now, you will have got like hit by um, a drawdown of 37.32%. But that is small compared to what you get during your best year, which is 54.68%. And it's guaranteed that it goes up. You know, the good thing about investing into ETFs, actually the one that tracks the index of these uh, high performing economies around the world, they always go up because if you check even the S&P 500, which is the one for USA, it always goes up. If you check the Citrix 40, it always goes up. If you go back in history and check how it has performed in the past 30 years, 10 years, you will see a trend of going upward. So you just invest and you know that it always goes up because of why? Because of inflation, because of population, people still you no know, give back, and then people need to consume stuff. When they consume stuff, they buy stuff. You know right? You know right? And then of course, those GDP always grows. Companies, I mean, uh, countries always fight to grow their GDPs. So this index it actually represents the stock market of a country. So the stock market of a country is businesses. Every country it's always fighting to grow its economy so these indexes they always go up over time but not in a straight line as you can see here the performance of your portfolio it has ups and downs it has ups and downs it has ups and downs it does not go up in a straight line but it's a compound this is the power of the compound year that we're talking about here which is growing at 11.03 percent all right so now we are done with the historical performance of this uh, 
ETF and we used here portfolio visualizer to bet test the performance of this thing, not only to invest based on your feelings, but doing deep research, researching this thing, checking its historical performance, and then have facts, develop your thesis, develop your idea, and then you invest. And that's how you make money and invest on things that only make you money and then avoid stuff that are kind of gambling, guessing, stuff that don't make you money. All right. Now, moving uh, forward, now I will, I will go to now the long-term driving catalyst. What are the things that actually drives, do that to kind of drive this investment vehicle upward? Now, we're talking about the Chinese economy. You know, Chinese is the second largest economy now, which is chasing USA, and then probably it will overtake it in future because it's growing fast. Now, I will take you to World Economic, uh, like IMF, International Monetary Fund's website, whereby we'll be checking the World Economic Outlook. The first thing that drives actually the economy of the country is unemployment. If you have a high unemployment rate, then the economy, the economy of that country is going to struggle because and then the stock market is not going to do well. Remember, unemployment rate, actually, it affects spending of consumers. And then the prices, the share prices of the companies, they go up due to increase in revenue, increase in net profit. Now, that increase in revenue and net profit, it's affected by what? By consumer spending. If there is, if there is less consumer spending in that country, and the consumer confidence is low due to high rate of unemployment. And then, of course, probably you'll expect the economy of that country to shrink and then the stock market to do bad because of why there is no much revenue and the net profit generated by the companies due to people being unemployed, most of them. But if we check China here, yeah, it's very, very interesting to check China after we've been hit by this pandemic in 2020 and still now 2021, still fighting this pandemic. You will find interesting data here on China. If you check USA, it's sitting at unemployment of 7.3. If you go to Canada, it's 7.9. Now I'm talking about large economies here. Then if you go into Russia, it's 5.2. And uh, as you move along on Poland, on the Eurozone there, you can see it's the average is around 5 there because most of the countries there, it's 5, 6, 7. And then uh, if you go to South Africa, for example, we are doing quite bad. We are sitting at 36.5 unemployment rate. But take a look at China. China is quite interesting in terms of the employee, its employment rate. This is China. China has 3.6 unemployment rate, which is kind of the lowest now compared to other biggest economies out there. Meaning more people in China are employed and consumer spending is going to increase, is increasing. And then consumer confidence is increasing. And then once consumer spending and then there's a low unemployment rate, that means profit for what? For companies in terms of the revenue and the net profit and then expansion of those companies. Then the whole economy is expanding, is growing. That means now the Chinese index, which represents the stock market in China, it's going to go up based on this data here from IMF. You can conclude on this. Now, let me show you another fact again, which is actually a very important factor that you can also use for your top down analysis in terms of the countries. Now we'll be looking at GDP, GDP, the growth domestic product, which is kind of, uh, normally uh, the revenue of the country. We can just take it as the revenue of the country, which is measured in terms of what the GDP. Remember last year it was 2020, a lot of countries actually, they had negative GDP. Their GDP failed actually. The growth of the GDP was negative, but guess what? China was positive. China was positive. Actually, it was only the actually it was the largest uh, economy that actually had a GDP that was positive last year. This is the data from uh, IMF again, International Monetary Fund, in terms of the GDP. This is the GDP. These are the countries. And then these are the years you can see here, 2020. Let's go to China for 2020, just to show you. China had a positive GDP in 2020. Here is China, Republic of China, and then we go to 2020. Uh, that was 2020. Yeah, 1.9%. Is that 2020? Yeah, it was 2020. China had a, a GDP of uh, positive GDP, even though here it was projected to grow at 1.9% due to the pandemic. And then it was uh, above this in terms of uh, it, it did better than people predicted that it will actually perform. And then they had a positive GDP. And if you check other countries in 2020, they did quite bad. You can see that. 
most of the country's GDP was negative, was negative, was negative, was negative, was negative. But only China that had a positive GDP. And then now let's check the projection of the GDP in 2021, in 2022. It's expected to grow at 8.2% in 2021. 2022, 5.8%. In 2023, uh, 5.7, 5.6 going forward, 5.5. So it's for the next five years, Chinese GDP is expected to grow more than 5%. Let's compare it with the leader now, the largest economy in the world, which is United States of America. Let's go to US and compare China with US. And you will see some interesting stuff here. This is my Excel sheet, which is I took it from... Uh, IMF, you know, you can export that data to your Excel so that you can analyze it nicely. So I'm looking for United States of America now. Uh, here we are on the use. Here is United States of America. If you go and check, 2020, it was negative, 4.3%. It was down by 4.3%. This is United States GDP. And then if you check the projections for 2021, United uh, US uh, GDP is expected to grow with 3.1% and then for 2022 is expected to grow with 2.9%, 2023 2.3, 2024 1.9, 2025 1.8. Do you see that the GDP of US is expected to grow at a rate which is less than 3% in the next five years but China it's above 5%. Do you see that now China is expected to grow at a large percentage in terms of the GDP uh, in the next 5 to 10 years compared to US, which is our first biggest economy. And China is the second largest economy, which is about to overtake the US. So this is factor number two on the long-term driving catalyst. The first one is an, it's an employment rate, which is too low. The second one is the GDP growth of China. So now, and China is heavily invested into tech. It's no longer a country which is only manufacturing stuff uh, using, uh, you know, doing those uh, fake products, actually copying and then producing product at the lower cost. No, now it's heavily invested into tech. It's competing with the U.S., with the Western uh, countries. So China, it is a good investment so far based with these two long-term driving catalysts. All right, now let's go to uh, now the technical analysis to check the price of this now ETF. Now we're done with the facts. Uh, in terms of the long-term uh, compound annual growth rate and the catalyst and what it is. Now, the next point that I want to cover is technical analysis, reading the price chart to identify the points where to add on my shares. All right. Now, here I am using investing.com. This is a daily chart. It showed all these candlesticks, these bars here, they represent daily. So this is a pattern that has been printed so far since inception uh, with this ETF. Remember, it only started in 2020, so there's no much data in terms of the price. But you can see a trend here. The price went up, came down, went up, came down. It was struggling to break that level there. That was a resistance. We call it a resistance, and then this was a support. So the price was in a range here. And then now, recently, we just broke out of that range, and then we went all the way upward as uh, the economy it is actually fighting to recover back with the rollout of the vaccine. So that was a good news. And then now we just got some resistance right around the 66. Then the, currently the price is pulling back. So when the price is pulling back, remember this area here, this zone here, the price was struggling to break through that. It was a resistance. It was preventing the price from going up. There were people who were selling here and selling here. Once that uh, resistance has been violated, now, now it will act as something else which is known as support. When the price comes back, price has memory. Now it remembers that around 58, the price was struggling to break that level. But now when it comes back, it will act as support. It will prevent the price from going downward. Here it was preventing the price from going upward. But finally, buyers, people who are buying, they won. They push the price upward. And then now it's coming back to that level. And then now the very same level now, it will act as support. Buyers will be there to defend that level, to push the price upward. Currently, we are in this level now. And then this is where now I am buying, adding my shares on the dip because this is up, this is a dip, you buy here and then to expect to catch the next wave upward, which is going to be going all the way up there. So this zone is the zone where like I am buying shares here, I'm adding shares here on this ETF. And then if it dips further all the way down to this level here, then that will provide.
provide me opportunity to buy again that will be a great opportunity to buy again and add more shares but i'm not expecting it to actually go below that level i'm not expecting it to just consolidate here and play around here and then and just go up all the way upward so this is a technical analysis uh reading the price section uh, uh on this uh, actually uh mc ci chinese index which actually etf that tracks the chinese index all right so i hope you guys you understand this uh, but again there is a video that i'm going to produce again in this channel which talks about how to read the graphs in terms of the technical analysis how to read the graphs for long-term investing so now the nice point to add shares here it's here i am adding here and then if the price uh, in the next couple of days closes above these candlesticks here then i will be adding more because that will be a bullish sign that now we are tracing we are going upward all right all right guys so that that's it for the price reading and the chart and the levels where i'm looking to buy this now the next part that i would like to talk about now it's risk associated with this etf of course the biggest read it's known um, the trade the tariffs you know the trade war between china and the us it's still on uh, there's still gonna be talks there going forward uh, you know the threats with some of the chinese stocks to be dis delisted in the new york stock exchange uh, no there's still gonna be negotiations so that is the main risk that i actually looking at now uh, in terms of going forward you know that yeah uh, it's a very big thing that i'm just actually checking that yeah if the negotiations between us and china they don't go well that might be the biggest factor that can affect this investment vehicle here but over a long term that will be resolved i hope so that will be resolved you now the two countries will come into you no know, conclusion into a fair agreement and then um, everything will just go back to normal and then this investment value i expect it to yield a more than 11 percent combined annual growth rate which is far much better than what you will get from the bank whereby you'll be getting five to seven percent and it also performs better than what satrix 40. it beats satrix 40 because we've seen that uh in terms of the gdp these guys are doing quite well i don't want even want to go to sa because our sa gdp is far worse so i was just used i used us and the china because us is number one and then china is number two but china is growing faster as you saw with the gdp numbers there and also the unemployment rate so now guys i've come into the conclusion up to the end of this video uh, and uh, yeah we will see each other on the next video probably which would be on the technical analysis so guys if you enjoy the content don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to my youtube channel bye guys i'll see you next time